What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over another episode of the Blueprint Only Input Buffer tutorial series. And so the last few episodes were really intense, so we're going to take it easy and just do a priority order one today. So this specific episode is going to be covering determining what move to use if two moves become available for use on the same frame. Or really before the next time start command is called. So we're going to have a move buffer that allows us to keep track of all the potential moves for us to use based on inputs given by the player. And the most complicated move out of all of those will be the one that is chosen. So essentially the most complex move, the one with the most inputs, we're going to prioritize since it is harder to perform. And if all of those inputs were met correctly, then most likely the user was trying to perform that action. There's not too much to show different today because really it's just an upgrade of the logic we already have, but you can see I can still use all of my commands that I have in the series. You can see in the top left it is printing all the different command numbers. That's command one, two, three, and four. And for the last one, it is my multi-input command. There we go. So you can see that the multi-input command is a little bit more reliable than it was in the past after this episode. That's the main improvement you'll get from today's episode. To get started in today's episode, if you want to get caught up in the blueprint only input buffer tutorial series, I'll link you to the first episode of that right here. Additionally, if you want to get caught up to everything else you're seeing here, such as the lock on the inventory, the attacking opponents, whatever it may be, that is all part of the third person tutorial series. So I'll link the playlist to the third person action RPG tutorial series right here in the top right corner. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started on today's episode. Like I said, it is actually going to be a pretty simple one. The only file we will need to go into today is our base character BP. So if we go into our base character BP, we need to change how our commands are started. So before, as soon as the inputs were met for our command, we just called start command and passed in the name of that command. That way we knew which one to activate. However, like I said, we now want to have this priority order. So we want it to be possible for multiple commands to be triggered on the same frame, but only one should actually activate. We don't want to allow both to run. Only one should activate, and then we're going to clear the buffer, and they'll have to enter the commands again for them to be relevant. So the first thing we need to do is make a new variable, and I've called this the move buffer. So it is an array of F command info structures. So whatever your command list is, we're taking that type and just making a move buffer out of it because we're gonna capture all the commands that are able to be used right now so we can determine what is the best one to use and then actually perform that command. So it's very simple, just make a new variable by pressing the plus and then for the actual type, we're gonna use our F command info, make sure that it is not a pill, a single variable, but instead an array and to find your F command info, if you forgot, simply just type in the name of the structure here and it will work perfectly fine. Let's see it pop up here. For the name, again, I called it move buffer because it's going to be all the moves that we have in here that are ready to use and we're just waiting. All right, so that's our move buffer variable. We're also gonna to need to make a function today called determine command to use. And we're gonna basically do this instead of calling start command, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's go into our check input buffer for command function. This is the really long one. It checks to see if we are pressing inputs that match any of the commands and then performs the command. At the very end of this logic, at the top path, we were calling start command to say, yes, we have triggered the command. We have pressed all the inputs that are relevant and that are necessary to activate it. So let's go ahead and start this command. But this would mean that the command is started as soon as the input is pressed when, again, now we're doing it based on a priority order. So we have to add it to the move buffer array instead. And then we will call a different function to determine what is the most appropriate move to use. So simply where we were calling start command, I've disconnected that. And you can get rid of it if you want. And get rid of it as well as the reroute node for the name that was being passed in. And instead, I'm going to call move buffer add. You could do add or add unique. It's fine either way because this is going to be updated when inputs are pressed. And of course, it's going to be cleared 
when a command is used, so it's not really a big deal whether it's unique or not. So I just did a standard add. Now for what you're adding, we're going to add the command that we were looping through and checking against because we know that is the one that we want to call start command on. So from the actual location, I'm using a reroute node from the beginning logic in the check input buffer for command. So essentially after the initial for loop, we get the command that we're checking against. I have a reroute node that goes the whole way and that's what is being passed into move buffer add. Alternatively, if you actually, if we back up a second and have the start command here, where you have this reroute node, it is coming off of the command that is broken. And so you can follow this back to this get node and you'll see it's the same spot. So however you want to trace that back will work. Just make sure you're calling move buffer add and passing in that value. So I'm going to clean this up. And when I do that, I'm going to obviously have to update my reroute node to make this look a little bit cleaner. Something like this should do. It doesn't have to be super crazy. Just want to make sure it looks nice. I think this is actually already straight, but we'll go ahead and straighten that up as well. So barely anything has changed. I'm also going to get rid of the other reroute node I had here because I don't need it. And there we go. And that's actually all we have to change in check input buffer for command. So that one's really simple. Now we need to go to our new function and think about what this is meant to do. So let's make a new function. And I called mine determine command to use doesn't have any input or output parameters. It's actually a pretty simple function in terms of that. In here is where we are determining what command has the highest priority and then which command the player is actually going to use. So to do this before anything, we make sure that the move buffer length is greater than zero. Remember that length returns the actual number of elements. So if we grab the length of this array and it returns zero, that means there's nothing in it. If there's nothing in it, then we don't have a command to use. So there's no reason to continue with the function. So literally move buffer length, then drag off the return value and check to see if it's greater than zero. Bring that Boolean return into a branch. And only if it's true, do we continue. The false doesn't have anything in it. Now, in this next logic, what we're doing is setting up a temporary command that I'm calling move to use. And I'm going to check each command in the move buffer against this initial move to use command. And if the command in the buffer is more complicated than the move to use command, we're going to update move to use to be that command in the buffer. So basically, move to use is a local variable. It's going to be local to this function. We only care about it when we're inside determine command to use. So I scrolled down to my local variable section, and I added a new one. I chose f command info as the type because that is what we're trying to use. So we want f command info just like our move buffer was, but we don't have to make it an array on this one. It's just a single. Now by default. You could set some data in here if you want, but I don't want anything in here. Instead, what I want to do is use the move buffer at index zero. So essentially, we'll just start at the initial index in the loop. So once you've made this local variable, you can drag it in here. And then we're going to want our move buffer. And we are going to want to get the move buffer. And we can get a copy because we don't need a reference. We're not updating move buffer. We're going to update the move to use. Then over on the right side where it returns the instance of the command at this index in the move buffer, we're going to right click on that little pin and split struct pin, which is going to get us this, which is all of our data. Now we're doing this because we can actually call set members in F command info. Enable all of our pins and pass along the data so that this struct reference 
gets all the updates for things that we need. Now, I did it like this so that you could determine if there were things you didn't want to pass along, like you had variables in here that were specific to the move buffer, but you wanted to ignore for the move to use. For example, has use command doesn't matter on move to use because it's never going to be true for now. So I could actually just disable this pin and get rid of it, not use it. But since I am passing along all the data from index zero, the move buffer, it is also possible that you just use set move to use and pass along a copy of move buffer at index zero. Either one is useful. I just want to show you both because this is something we've done in the past for this sort of thing, but we were selective with data we were passing along. Whereas in this case, I'm actually just passing along all the data anyway, so there's no real reason to split them. Whatever you'd like to use is up to you. I typically like to use the method I'm not going to use first so I can show it to you. And then I'll change it over to the other method. So I'm going to get a copy of the move buffer like we talked about. And I'm going to call set move to use. Only if it's true do we do this. And that is our new logic for this area. All right, so we're good to go there. Move to use is now being set to the move buffer at index zero. Now what we have to do is loop through all of our indices in the move buffer and make sure that there's none that are of a higher priority than this. So we're going to create a standard for loop. And I'm going to put the first index as one because we already have index zero. Since move buffer at index zero is being set to move to use, there's no reason to compare move to use to move buffer at index zero because they should be exactly the same. So we can skip that one to speed up the process a little bit. And then for the last index, we're actually going to take the length of the move buffer. We want to loop through and see if move to use is length, meaning the inputs that are required to perform that command is less than move buffers length at each index. If it is, we want to update move to use to be the move buffer value at that index in the array. So simply from the loop body in the for loop, we need to get our move to use and we need to break it. When you break it, you'll have some inputs in here that you don't need, just like I was showing you earlier. So you can hide unconnected pins and only enable the inputs pin. That's the only one we're going to need because this is where all of our inputs for each command is. So we want to grab the length of that array. And we want to check if it's less than. And those are these three nodes. Now we need to have our move buffer get and we can do a copy again. But for the array index this time, instead of putting in a hard coded value like zero, we're going to take the index of the for loop. We're going to break that value and only show the inputs pin, get the length of this and plug it into the other input. Then if it's true that these command inputs or the number of inputs in this command is less than the number of inputs in this command, then we want to set move to use to be this new command. If it's false, we don't do anything because move to use is still the move that we're expecting to use, so we don't have to update it. Then on completed of the for loop, we can call start command. This is what we were calling before and check input buffer for command, but we only want to do it now that we're sure this is the move we want to execute. So again, move to use and a break. And the only pin I have enabled is the name pin because start command takes in the command name as a parameter to determine which one to execute. Once we do this, we can clear move buffer. The loop is finished, so we know that a command is being chosen, in which case we don't need to have any of the data in the move buffer anymore because those moves are all obsolete. We want to clear it and make sure we're only using ones that are relevant when we go to check against the moves to use.
Something else we can do to make this logic a little bit better is make sure that the command is not already in use. If it is, don't use it again. It's not really required that you do this because our animation system won't let us do this at the current time, but it could become an issue if you have the ability to cancel animations. So I'm just going to enable that one pin on the F command info and then drag off of it into a branch. And only if it's not already in use, we're gonna start the command. Otherwise, we're just going to ignore that logic all right, and now we have to know where to call determine command to use. So the best place to call it is in tick because tick is called every frame. And so we can check for our inputs every single frame. So in event BP tick, after I do my cur tick logic to update the tick value, I call determine command to use. Everything else in this function in my blueprint tick is exactly the same. So I won't be going over it. I've just added this one function call right here, determine command to use. So every frame it will go and figure out what is the best command to use if there is one. If there's not one because nothing's in the move buffer, then nothing will be used. At one frame, it's kind of hard to see, but it should make moves that are more complicated, more reliable to perform, especially when they overlap with other moves that are simpler. So for example, if you have three inputs in a command and the last input is light attack, but you also have a command on one input and that input is light attack. If you've performed all three inputs, you should see that the more complicated three input command will execute. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this made performing some of your more complex commands more reliable. If it did, please subscribe. It does more for myself in the series than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for all the love and support. You really make these series possible and I am so incredibly grateful for you. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to assist you with any problems you ran into and get you rolling on your game. And anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.